the Couch is proudly supported by Palace Cinemas, Elite Audiovisual Productions, Crown and Andrews Board Games, fun for the whole family, and Scoot Airlines. Escape the ordinary, fly Scoot. Hello Australia, welcome to episode 645 of The Couch in High Definition. Thank you to all those Facebook viewers on a Wednesday as well. Thanks for your support. Big show today, let me tell you who's on it. Today we're talking bitchin' with uh, Ted, of course, Jen and Chris. Stay tuned for that one very soon. Talking entertainment with Alexander Carito. Uh, Alexander and Carito, but Carito you'll catch her on a bit of a couch extra online very soon. Talking travel with Steve Collins. He's just come back from Lombok, flying Air Asia. He's got back. He's going to talk to us about that one. Food Bank WA, I've got Superhero Foods. We're going to find out about that one as well. Later, we're going to talk to an author that's got a brand new book called Real Differences. S.L. Limb is her name. And finally on the show, Millennium Kids. They're doing great things for the environment. They're all young kids. They run their own business. They're making lots of money, but making great decisions. It's a big couch. We are still 100% fresh and local, and we're coming to you now. It's showtime on the couch. That was a very quick walk across set. We've got the bitches in for another great segment, so let's introduce them. On the left of me, of course, on the right of me, is Chris Hillsley from 6PR. Thank you very much. Thank you to Jen Merrigan for coming in today from Have A Go News. And thank you to Ted Bull from job. ABC and everything else. That's today, tonight, sir. He's from the ABC, you know, but he did a lot more than just ABC. Yeah, yeah, only 25 years there. Can I congratulate you on that segment? Even though Channel 7 didn't really show much of you, and I thought you were well, the biggest star there. Oh, I love you. Well, no, Baz, Lionel was there. Well, uh, what do you do? It's, it's good, good to, to see you. <laughs> But I did notice that he has um, the voice isn't as good as it used to be. Even oh, the whistle, he's great. He went and his teeth fell out. <laughs> <laughs> and can I just tell you, we're actually going to get Lionel York on the show oh, very, yeah. very soon. Great. So great. I look forward to that. After the Russell Goodrick success, we're going to get him on. But thank you for coming in, all three of you. Thank you to uh, Chris and Jen as well. But what's your story today? Well, I'm glad you asked for it because I think this is something near and dear to our hearts. And that is the lust for a Logie. And I have—I don't know about how far you've lusted or how far you've gone, I've but I've loved the Logies well, for so many years, except for the last ten. Well, in 1983, they said that I was a walk-up start to take out a Logie, but mm. the problem was I didn't have the numbers to cut out the tokens mm. out of the mm. TV news. To now send it's all in done online. Well, it is, and so I've, I've got this pain in my arm from using the telephone for you, saying, yeah. "Oh, Fred Mafrica should have a logo for yeah, being the loveliest get, person well, on television." You've got to get high tech about this. Just get anonymous on your side and get them to hack <laughs> and vote right for you. Yeah. Do we really? I mean, we were talking about this the other day. Yes. Said, and the Logies were on last week for those people. We're not bagging them. They've been on. They've done it. We oh, I'm bagging them because but they're not what they used to be, I Fred. agree with you. Paddy uh, Newton said the same well, thing well, I, I was, a whole heap of yeah, Well, when said. I saw Paddy Newton agree with me, I thought, Paddy, you've been reading my I mail uh, once again. You rung And her. somebody answered, no, that's hello. That's who've been reading your mail. Oh. You're of interest. Because <laughs> I rang Paddy's number and I got someone at hello, but Newton speaking. Oh. <laughs> I said, it's, oh. it's Ted Bull here. He goes, oh, hello, Ted. <laughs> he, he, no, still, he still owes me a, a lottery uh, ticket from 1978. Don't bother claiming. But I won't. Yeah, I will. Yeah. Any, Can anyway, I tell you something. Claim it and claim I interest love the and interest on potential I, earnings. On the earnings. I used to love the logo. I have to say, when Bert yeah. used to host them, I still well, think he's alive. He should still be doing. Well, I, I, the thing I used to love about the logies back in the day was not so much picking who was drunk, but picking who was sober. And I used to love the celebrities who came. They were no, you know, they were minor celebrities, but they came to Australia, all and all that. of a sudden they were being wined and dined and, mm. and treated like Frank Sinatra. But they were so real. It well, was, well, they real were. They were so really pissed. Achievement. Right? Yes. But didn't the Logies used to be about See, safety? Now that would be on social media, and everyone would be saying. 
he had a drink. We it's know, an outrage. We know what yeah. happened with Carl yeah. Stefanovic. You know, every time he had an after party thing, that's all the media spoke about. Yeah, him. yeah. But yeah. Nine didn't care. Gave them more ratings. Yeah. They were doing really well. well, well that's yeah, what they wanted. At, you know, but but getting back to my point. So the getting back to my point. I I was watching the gardening program on ABC television last night. Yep. And there was Costas at the end uh, trying to hook in people to vote for oh, him and the Logies. I saw we're that. Talking, yeah. We're and talking all... about the ABC, which never used to get well, into this. Yeah. Well, the thing was, unless it was a serious program like mm. Test Card and Music, and they, I mean, there was Costas oh, I with. Test Card and Tone. There was. <laughs> Thank you. Kilohertz reference. There, there was Costas yep. with all this sincerity coming the out of the follicles yep. in, his, his beard. in his beard. I nearly said in his boot. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty hard to tell the difference. Oh, Ted's getting old. He's losing it, folks. There's five meals in yep. that beard. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, getting back to it, I mean, they're, they're, they're all, they're all, you know, sort of throwing out this thing, saying, "Vote for me, vote for me." And it's, I mean, you, you remember people like Bert, uh, Don Lane, Graham uh, Kennedy, Graham Mike Kennedy Walsh. Golden Ray, Ray Martin. Yeah. But I have to say, um, Gary McDonald, Norman Gunston, mm, yes. he was the first to take the proverbial out of it. I, I was doing a show in Melbourne on radio, and he came into the studio as Norman Gunston, and he was carrying his Logie in those old plastic uh, bath bags they used to have, yes. you know, plastic <laughs> seagull, and he's carrying it in that. And without thinking, I said, oh, mate, can I see your Logie? And he slipped out of Norman into Gary, and he said, you've got to be joking. You know, so I guess people so are have been... thinking we've lost the relevance. Do we still need the Logies? Do you think or we need to return them to base? Uh, yeah, we need something. But it's a shame. Perhaps we don't have the shows that are worthy of earning them. Do you remember Channel 7 used to have a separate, them. like the People's Choice Awards? They used yeah. To do it. They disappeared. Yeah, I know that was... ended up buying TV Week yeah. and Nine took Does over Does TV Week still exist? They do exist. I think they're, so. they're part of the... I think they're part of Nine Entertainment. Ah. That's why Nine gets to host the Logies every year now. But on the Gold Coast, it should be in the Southern Cross Hotel. So, but just, hang just on, quickly, it's you, not there can either. I ask Jen and Chris just quick as we oh, need sorry. to move on. What do you guys think about the Logies? Is Ted right? Has it lost its appeal to being I've about achievement? I've never achievement? been that interested in the Logies. Yeah. I loved it when Bert yeah, hosted. So that, yeah, I yeah, love Bert, yeah. Because we used to love Bert. We used to love seeing a carry on on the yeah. Logies. What about you, Chris? I'm, I'm with Jen. I... I'm really trying to get excited about this and I keep falling asleep. It's like watching Telethon mm. for me. Telethon lost its appeal when they moved to the convention centre. Yeah, it yeah. It lost yeah. the TV and the people side of it. It's all corporate now. Yeah. And they're doing a great job. I'm not knocking that. But I just think the Logies have a, has a, a chance of losing what they were created to do. And you're right. The entertainment's great, but it's not as funny. No. It's all scripted. Yeah. It's all professional. But also, I think people chasing votes is yeah. really crap. Oh, yes, it is crap. I was I mean, shocked. Put it in ABC put it, doing yeah. it last Put it in the magazine yeah. and say, vote for your favourite person Ooh, and let the yeah. chips to make it more entertaining, we add radio to it as well. Maybe make it Testing. TV Testing, one, radio. two, three, four. Ooh. A vote for TV Chris Hilsley is a vote for reality. There you go. <laughs> Jen, what's your story? Oh, I, I yeah, know you've got a mate. shitty one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's some bad toilet, to to bad toilet humour coming from this one. Now, flushable wipes. These were on the news last week. These were oh, on the yes. Crap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, so what's ugh. the story about? So the story is that the National Consumer Watchdog has failed to persuade a judge that Kimberly Clark Australia Which misled customers when it said its wipes were flushable. And what they're saying is basically that they're blocking sewerage and they're bad for the environment. Of course, not cheap, win that. cheap, cheap ass plumbing wouldn't be doing that, would it? So we know <laughs> we were talking about this as well, Jen. Well, Around the world, you don't use your, you don't put them down the toilet. You put them in bins and then they clean the bins. In out. Turkey and Greece, yes, you yeah, do. you put. They you have they a bin end up next. In Greece and Greece, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> in Turkey and Greece, they have a bucket next to the toilet mm. and you put your toilet paper or whatever yeah. in in there. Or and to then whatever they, you what, worry about. What makes about. me laugh about these <laughs> yeah. tissues, I buy the $2 ones from Coles. I don't want to hear about Do you want to hear no, about this? The Him reason I want to I'm going to tell you about it oh, is okay. these ones that are flushable are about 5 or $6, okay? Because my sister uses the flushable ones because she's an environmental person. But if they're not working, if they're not actually biodegradable... Don't they all end up well, treatment works anyway? Well, Ted and I were, uh, were talking about this farm. earlier. Yes, we were. And, uh, before we came on air, and we had a look on YouTube at the yeah. Fatberg that yes. they found in London. I saw that. 
And that is this. It was Disgusting bigger than mess. two football fields. Yeah. A fat bird. A, a fat bird of like grease. Like an iceberg, but a fat bird. Of grease really? and oil yeah. and flushable. I've seen an iceberg. I've never seen it. Flushable oh, yeah. 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 And Some people jams, might call me a fat bird. <laughs> and it jams. But you don't jam up the sewage system well, in London. Well, if you there's, jam there's, me down there's, the there's, toilet, there's, I reckon a, I might block it. And there's a warning for captains of vessels. You might be able to unblock it for us. <laughs> there's, a war, there's a warning for captains of vessels that if you're on the SS Titanic, do not go up our drain. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or a fish called Wanda. <laughs> but, but basically, I think you... Everyone is becoming a lot more environmentally yes. aware. Mm. And but like a lot of things, fanaticism mm. is now starting to take it's over. And people start saying stuff that is not true. You know the best example of that right mm. now? 5G. Mate, seriously, there are some very loose units in this world it's saying crazy. some <laughs> really bizarre stuff about 5G. And I said to somebody... The, fre Telephone. the frequencies you're quoting aren't even correct. Correct. He got really angry with me and told me I was part of a big corporate conspiracy. conspiracy. Yes. And I said, listen, mate, I'll be part of a big corporate conspiracy as soon as any big corporation me, wants a big fat check. <laughs> Thank you. You should, have, you should have used a flushable wipe. No. That's what I did, yeah. just then. Yes. You, should, you should have used a stick. No, you're, you're 100% right. Look, I think when it comes to recycling and all these theories that people have, I'm into recycling, but I think it's becoming a joke where we have to do all the work at home. Even the bins now, you have to select the right bin to put the right thing. Then I heard last week, you can't get a Coke bottle. Recycled. You've got to take the top off the Coke bottle because they, they can't. actually tell people properly what they can and can't recycle. We were Great. told last year we could recycle glad wrap yeah. and apparently now, now we can't. can't. Oh no. No and you can't put not certain only trays that. in there and things oh. like that. The oh. stuff that they were getting recycled they can't get recycled anymore. Because China but won't China take, won't it. take it. it. And Indonesia won't take it anymore either. So the, the story about these wipes where, where are we going? We need to make sure that we buy ones that are... Are they about the flushable wipes? or more No, the judge says what? these ones are OK. Yeah, the okay. Ju basically, the judge said... The only thing that the ju judge said that they misled the public over was saying that they were made in Australia and they actually Gee, weren't. They were made in Germany and Everybody in the knows UK. nothing's I made in Australia. I do have one question. Yeah. South Ted, just Korea. Quickly, just one question. Yeah. Is this a smear campaign? <laughs> Oh, you're raking I have up an the answer. Button, I have an answer I'll for that. I'll wipe the floor this with is, <laughs> This is a family show, so I won't provide the answer. You're looking a little, and he's looking very flushed after you get that answer. Yeah. Chris, it's your turn. What are we talking oh, about? Yes. Banning mobile phones. Yeah, there's eh? a national mobile phone ban in public schools, which apparently is facing resistance because uh, Dan Tian, the education minister, the federal education minister, mm -hmm. is asking all states to consider a ban on mobile phones in schools as a way of combating cyberbullying. I think uh, Victoria Victoria and New South Wales are going ahead. Uh, other states, including uh, Queensland and also the uh, two territories, Northern Territory and the ACT, mm. don't have any plans. Mate, I'll tell you right now, kids will get around it. They'll find a way. They to will get out. around it. Well, you, I, you know, my, 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 my great concern is that if a kid wants to put a bet on, how are they going to put a bet on if they haven't got a telephone? Do you, do you know what I reckon they need to do? how are they going to tell me how much they hate me if they haven't got a telephone with the ability to SMS me? No one hates you, Chris. I actually think it's a great idea to stop kids taking phones because when we were kids, we still, when we were sick, the school contacted our parents, our parents came oh, and picked us I up. I like that. Oh, how are you they going to contact your parents? Next. Well, the Correct. school yeah. used to do That's that. And they used I to have a nurse. I think they still have a phone. And they had a nurse at the school. Gee whiz, where did you go? We didn't have anything like that. If I didn't turn up to school, they sent a note home to my mother saying, thank you very bloody much. No, back when you were born, it was the old can and string. But I mean, it didn't go as far. But can I say to you, why do schools just bring in a jamming device that all it does is jams the frequency of the work? They had one of those up the Mate. Well, maybe. Can I you just quickly what, ask? No, I reckon ban them. A good old-fashioned EMP device. Uh, where's the jammer? Oh, you've got to have your old-fashioned <laughs> EMP mate, device. If I was, if I was a school student now, trust me, there would be <laughs> forms of. Scholastic cyber terrorism. If in you plan. were a school kid now, I think most of the kids would leave the classroom. Well, I would say you've repeated they would, years they six, would survive. 25 times. <laughs> Ted, what do you reckon? I mean, telephones, those Telephone, things that came nah, out. No, no, look, I agree with whatever anybody says. Do you think they should be banned in school? Do you think there's no place well, for kids uh, to well, have I, them I, I 24 think, hours uh, a day? You know what? Can I dare say this? Perhaps parents should take some control yeah. oh, and say, I'm concept. sorry, you're not taking your Instead telephone. Just to buying school. them whatever they want. Yes, buying yeah, the, the, and as far as cyberbullying goes, it's going to happen, unfortunately. It's not phones that causes that. No. But what no, you need to do is teach, yeah. teach people how to fight back.
Yep. Now, use the anonymous approach. I will now send you viruses to all your phones and all your computers, and you won't pick on me there, again because yeah. so you won't have any devices. We, we are work. divided. We, we agree on getting rid of phones, but maybe we don't think it's going to make much difference. No. Thank you to Ted Ball. Pleasure. Anything major happening next week? Uh, You're waking up alive. <laughs> It'll be on today, tonight. Be Watch it on today, on tonight. Pages of Have a Go News. Oh, on will the I? Fan, Flash fantastic on my trip. Story. This oh. is the story of today, tonight. Today, tonight. Ted's alive. Next. <laughs> Joe, Jen. I hope I'm not dead. You're going to feel really no, bad I'm about this. I'm glad you're around. And we, we, I still Ted, think you won't be the same if you're just there like this. Jen Merrigan, <laughs> haveagonews.com.au. Yes. Thank you very much. Always the, the best read local here in WA. And, of course, your, your show at Perth tonight. 6pr.com. Live and local every night. <laughs> Hey, mate, we better go. We get the wind-up over. Time to go. <laughs> we will be back after the break with uh, entertainment. So stay tuned. You're watching The Couch all around Australia. See you then. Well done, everybody. Welcome back to The Couch. Thanks for your company today. And thanks to Liam Kyle as well, who's filling in as our director today too. Okay, we're going to talk entertainment and we're talking travel as well very soon with Steve Collins. But let's uh, introduce yourself again. It is, of course, Alexander Sacosta. Now, where is that name from? Because someone asked me the other day, is he Italian? Yes, I am Italian. And it's said, actually Circosta, but that's really difficult to Circosta. pronounce. Circosta. Circosta, you roll the R. Easy. From now on, you're going to get Circosta. Circosta. I like it. Grazie. <laughs> Prego. Now, you've got a whole <laughs> heap of topics there. Let's get straight into them. Entertainment. All righty. Well, Guy Sebastian, obviously, he's been building this massive home in Byron Bay, uh, same place near Chris Hemsworth. Yep. $3.1 million. Oh, huge, all... huge house. But the exterior, not great. Not great, Fred. Mm. It basically looks like a concrete oh, pillar. Oh, terrible. I couldn't live in a house like that. It's crap. There. <laughs> what do we it think? It looks like a shop. Yeah, and uh, you know what? But a lot of the residents have complained. They said it looks like a fortress. It looks like a nightmare. And that's his new house. That's his new house where he's oh, currently I, living, I, I yeah. I could live there. But the thing is, I like, I actually would probably really love to live near, like, singers. I think that'd be great because then there'd be, like, interesting things... Like, I, my dream, Fred, is actually to live on a street with just all the former Australian know, Idol contestants. I want to know, how did Guy Sebastian make it so big? Because I have to say, I don't particularly think he's a great singer. That's a huge no, but it's true. challenge. Australia how, thinks he's great, Fred. I, I think he's great, but I don't think he's any more great than, uh, say, Olivia Kate DeGurio, or... season three winner. <laughs> <laughs> Or what about... Well, let's Cosmo DeVito, right. I'm yeah, a oh, fan. <laughs> mm, yeah, and what about, I hear a voice, a voice that says, move on. Anyway, <laughs> next, what else have we got? <laughs> Talking about Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, uh, well, he's all right. We can talk about him. <laughs> he's in... looking younger and younger every time I see him. Yeah, completely natural. How much cement has he used on that facelift, do you reckon? I don't know, but hey, a lot of money, I'd it. say. I reckon. Steve Collins, of course, talking from the side. Of course there. I am. I'm interrupting, as you No, usual. no, you're all right. You can do that. Well, we turn you, on your mic. He's now. only That's 72 good. years there he is. old. Yeah, so. yeah. Only 72? Yeah. Are you young, serious? Yeah, he's only 70. I don't admit that. Is he only 72? Yeah, is he sponsored by Ready Mix? <laughs> I tell you what. He's looking good. I mean, when he does talk, he has that. <laughs> he's looking good compared to what? Well, compared to me, I guess. But <laughs> the thing is, he's, when you hear him talk, he's. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's always got that rocky yeah, yeah. Like that. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, the yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. You're very good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Italian too. And what are we um, talking about? Well, him the about? thing is, he's actually uh, doing uh, kind of a tour through uh, London and Birmingham. Perfect. And not Australia. Yeah. No. Oh, thank <laughs> God for that. And it's sort of telling untold stories from their careers, and he's doing it with Arnold Schwarzenegger as well. And. They released it. He's doing it with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, yeah. he's going through the tour as well. Oh, oh right. the tour. Oh, I thought he might have been re redoing the Italian Stallion with uh, with Arnie. That mm. was a good film if you've ever seen that. How do you pronounce Arnold? <laughs> Schwarzenegger. 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 Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, it's going to cost uh, one thousand five hundred dollars for a selfie with him. <laughs> Yeah, Cost it's two. very expensive. I'd rather buy a camera. <laughs> well, that's the thing, because they actually said Mel Gibson is there and he'll pay you $1,500 to have a selfie with him. <laughs> I reckon I could go there. Where, where are we going again? Where is he doing this? Birmingham. I reckon if I go to Birmingham, just charge 50 bucks a photo, yeah. most people say, oh, I'll get it with the cheap fat guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, fair enough, you know, make money 50 how you bucks, can. 50 bucks, imagine the photos. The thing is, I'd, I'd buying, get his man. Madame Tussauds wax model and, get, and charge people cheaper. five bucks to have a photo. I tell you what, do you reckon people will pay? Obviously they are. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think would you pay that much for it? Oh, mm. Go on. <laughs> I, pay, I don't have that kind of money to spend on a selfie. If I want to, like, I tell take you what, a picture. 15, that much money, 1500 bucks or thereabouts, right, yeah. in Birmingham, I'd pick a beautiful hotel, yeah. I'd have a fantastic hire card, great five-course meal, mm. and then I'd just go... 
And have you ever it. been to Birmingham? That doesn't exist there. Oh, well, maybe I won't then. Well, What's maybe. happening with the WA Opera? Ah, WA Opera has a new production coming out just starting in July on the 13th. It is Sweeney Todd, the Demon Barber of Fleet now, Street. Now, do you know where Sweeney Todd was from? He was from a great show called Wonderland on Channel 10. He's also been on Home and Away, I think, and a few others. The guy that's actually playing Sweeney Todd. Oh, Land. I thought yeah. you meant the character. No, 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 no. He hasn't killed him no. yet. Yeah, that's why he was cut from the show. Yeah. He's turning all the Home and Away cast into <laughs> into pies. pies. Yeah. No, he's a great actor. Straight. I think his name's Ben, isn't it? That is correct, yes. There, there you go. I know uh, fantastic. He's got the West Australian Opera Chorus in it as well, who mm -hmm. have been in the productions from last year, including Carmen and Don Giovanni. And do you know the Mary Street? Bakery. They've got three locations. One's here in North Perth, That's up the right, road. Yeah. They made a pie to celebrate Sweeney yeah, Todd, of and it's a blueberry and all these sort of things. Apparently, it's very fattening and very nice. Oh, I thought you were going to say they actually put human remains in it. No, no, no. <laughs> no, they've actually specified no human remains. <laughs> if you're going to call it the Demon Barbara Fleet Street Pie, mm. come on, got, come on, you got to have a bit. It of, has yeah. to have something. A it. Like, a finger maybe like sticking out of it or something like that. Now I've just become vegetarian. <laughs> But uh, what else did you have? Now, the, when are the dates? When is it that go 13th, away? 16th, 18th and 20th at His Majesty's Theatre So there's the only city. those four, four days. Four dates and there's no possibility of extension, so book Good. now. Yeah, Good, absolutely. get in and buy get those in. pies from Mary Street because I think yeah. they run out on the, I think it's the 13th of July, they stopped selling them. Makes sense, All yeah. right, what's happening with the, the next Jane Lynch? Glee star Jane Lynch. Apparently she came here to Mundaring to get away from it all, which I found fascinating that all these celebrities, it's when they think of travelling... hotel up there. Someone. Yeah, but I, she I would have to loved to have been a, I would have loved to have been a travel agent. Could you imagine there's a great place called Monday? Yeah. Yeah. You'll love it. Yeah, she's, and like, she's so like, quiet. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. there you go. It turned out Perth is turning to this like hideaway for all the celebrities. One so. of the world's most popular tourist destinations, you reckon? No, no, that's yeah. Australia, you know, oh. overall. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say Mundaring. Mundaring, yeah. uh, suburb. Fair enough. <laughs> Personally I prefer Sawyer's Valley to Mundaring. <laughs> now Let's talk about the new Matrix film that's coming yeah, out. Yeah, really excited. There's been a, the rumour mill's been going for ages ever since the last film finished, The Matrix Revolutions. And obviously with Keanu Reeves having this huge career kind of resurgence this year, he was voted the most wholesome person alive. He still looks good for, if, you know, for he's, he's aged a bit. But 72, he's... would you believe? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I thought if he's 72, See? I think uh, Stallone's got a problem. Well, there we go. Being such a good person has kept him young. And he's back in the in the next... Uh, well, video. he hasn't... Nothing has been officially no. confirmed, but people are almost pretty sure. He the said Wachowski that if it the Wachowski brothers? sisters, if they said if they were going to direct, then he uh, said he would come back on board. He'd come on board. And so, why are they so special? Uh, they're the original directors of the original. Oh, so they were the original for the... Yeah, and yeah, how many yeah. have they made? Have they only they made, made three. two? Three. And the Animatrix as well. So two have been or three? All three. This may would be I, may I say, before. Hugo Weaving created the most incredible villain for the, mm. the Matrix yeah, series. Right. He was brilliant. That's Mr. Smith. Smith. Agent Smith. Smith. We have to keep an eye on that. I've never seen Hugo. Has he actually been in them, has he? He's been in all three. Oh, well, yeah. there you go. That's how much I don't know about that movie. Should More than 70,000 fans have joined a bid to, for actor to be named this year's Time Magazine's Person, Person of, of the, the Year. Year. Really? Keanu, Keanu Reeves. Reeves? Yeah, yeah. And now we award him Person of the Year. And <laughs> finally, not? what have you got? Anything else? That's it. That's everything, Fred. Mm. That is all. Get excited. Sylvester Fantastic. Stallone and Keanu Reeves. <laughs> You've given us the full wrap on entertainment. Thank you very much to uh, Alexander Koska. <laughs> Thank you very much. We'll see you in a couple of weeks' time. We're going to talk uh, travel. We're going to talk Lombok. But first, let's give away some fantastic movie tickets. I've got a double pass, gold lounge, and a double, uh, double pass in the normal standard. So all you have to do, if you haven't been already, to our fantastic Rain Square location of this great cinema. It is, of course, Palace Cinema. They have everything. They've got a bar. They've got a restaurant. They've got many comfy seats. They've got the most beautiful theatres. Not as big as the normal ones. So you're a bit more intimate. But they've got their own gold lounges called Platinum. And they've also got their normal standard. There's a Platinum and there's a standard. Now, if you'd like to win those tickets, very, very simple. All you've got to do on an SMS, 0439 929 929, that's our SMS number, put the code word PALACE and then we need your name and address as well. Name and address, the code word PALACE. Do it now. From anywhere in Australia, you can actually use these tickets over in Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide, wherever PALACE is. But if PALACE is not in your state, you'll have to fly to Perth or fly to Melbourne. So don't enter. All right, yeah, unless you live in the state that's got Palace Cinema. But thank you very much to Palace Cinemas for sponsoring the segment and we love giving away your tickets as well. Time to talk travel. 
He's ah, back. Yes, I've been beamed down by Scotty into this. this Not only place have you on been, you've chair. travelled to Lombok the last yeah. couple of weeks. You've also had your friends over from Sydney, yeah. and you've been all over Western Australia. As yeah, well, not all you? over. We've just done like a little bit of it. Up, up, Cal up, Barry, up. Monkey Mile. Oh, God, that's beautiful up there in Shark Bay, etc. But I want to talk about Lombok. Yes, please because do. Because the reason why is Air Asia Indonesia or Air Asia have uh, just begun direct flights from Perth to Lombok. Yep. So it is a really easy play way to get there now, mm. if, only from Perth. So if you're living in say, other parts of, uh, of Australia, $99 they had $99 flights. fares, yeah. which is just amazing. And they're still cheap now because I only had a look this yes. morning. I think there's, about, it's still not, there's some $99 fares. There, there are, and there's some really, really good fares. We had this great welcome when we arrived this in the inaugural flight. And I'll tell you what, one of the benefits of flying direct to Lombok from Perth is uh, the, the flight time is 3 hours and 40 minutes, which is yep, just 10 minutes sure. longer than going to Bali. Yep. But the other thing is when you get there, they've only got a very few number of international flights. So getting from customs and immigration is dead easy. You're out in, in a matter of minutes. Yeah. It's just great. Um, now, the... Uh, the I the airport is, is is quite away from the main place. Yeah, it's about an hour or so. About an hour or so from Singi, which a is the main place. beach on Lombok. Yeah. When, when you got off your plane and you went yeah. out into the, the the foyer area, you yeah. got a taxi. Did you yeah. just look out and say, "How beautiful is this"? No, because it was about one o'clock in the morning. How dark by is the it? time they had all that, I was at our day. <laughs> like, we we actually checked it? into our hotel at, at Singi at about one thirty in the morning. Oh wow! So you didn't and get to And we're see. only there, and we had to leave at nine o'clock because you only had a three day trip. Yeah, I only had three days. It was very very quick. So what do you remember? Remember about Mataran? Uh, probably you didn't well, Mataran. Much. No, we went from oh. Mataran on the way back, and we, we had it's lunch at a at a at a, at a a local restaurant. There was a beautiful restaurant, by the way, and, and the food was really good. Lombok uh, means chili in uh, in Indonesian, and uh, that's reflected in their local cuisine because they have this little potent chili. Mm. Which is used in the samples and the cooking and all that. They and love their food feel. quite hot over there. They do, they do, particularly on Lombok. Whereas in, when you go to Bali, as you know, it, 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 it's a lot milder. But look, I have to say, I didn't, I didn't spend a lot of time in Singigi. In fact, you've spent a lot more look, time I, in Singigi than me. Look, I've been two or three times. Singigi is what you would call, folks, when you go to Bali, yep. for example, yep. it's your kuda. It's your leggy and it's your seminyak. So Sengigi, yeah, except it's a, it's a hell of a lot quieter. And more beautiful because it's, it's just on the beach. Beautiful. It's just gorgeous. Here, here we are now. We're, we're just looking it's at Sengigi. It's picturesque. It's green. You know what it's I love lovely. as well? The beaches in Sengigi. Yeah. Lots of them have got the black sand. Yeah, they have because it's volcanic. And but but the other thing about them is that the, you can have them pretty much to yourself. You see a photo of a beach here. And there's no one on it. Oh, that's the Aruna, the Aruna. Singigi, and I've stayed Well, you've there. stayed there as well. Lovely what a lovely place. hotel. And this is a beach at St. Gigi. Look at that. It's beautiful. Oh, look, it's picturesque. Beautiful day. It's just picturesque. Uh, that was about 9 o'clock in the morning, so perhaps not many people there. And this is where we caught the ferry, went to the Gilly Isles. Oh, and we caught we caught a boat to uh, there's three three of them there's Gilly Air which is the one we went to we went there for lunch yep uh, and there's Gilly Meno which is one in the middle and then there's Gilly Trawangan which mm. is the other one and here we are, we're snorkeling we went snorkeling off uh, Gilly I thought Meno you had to abandon ship <laughs> well I had to abandon ship uh, when they saw me coming but uh, they've got these underwater sculptures there so you dive oh, wow. down to these sculptures there's plenty of seafood this is Gilly A Air and we went there for lunch we went and had a cooking class at this lovely little restaurant oh. local restaurant that That's your taxi. is the is the taxi they don't there are no mecha, uh, uh, mechanical no, vehicles no on any of these islands, and you either have Look, bikes they describe or it as, you go... Yeah, I was going to say, they describe uh, Lombok as yeah. Bali 30 years ago. Yeah, that's pretty... Pretty much right. Uh, it, it, look, it is a different culture there yeah. because whereas Bali is mainly Hindu, yeah, right. uh, Lombok is mainly Muslim and, and that's reflected in the fact that you see mosques Correct. everywhere. But the people are still very friendly. Look, they're, I, they're, they're, I, they're great. The first time I went to Lombok, I have to tell people, you, you sort of get a shock thinking, oh, where's everything? They've yep. got four or five major shopping centres there now, yep. which I'm talking multi-storey shopping centres. That's right, they do. And they've got everything you need. They have everything you need, but I spent most of my time on Gili Prarangan and we're getting and all the you've pronunciations got to go to right today. That's it. <laughs> and this, this is, they call this the party island. Well, yep. I tell you what, yes, there are a lot of cafes and oh, restaurants and bars there, there but it, it's about one zillionth of, of Kuta. Yeah. I mean, it is really, really laid back. There's a lot of water sports there, kayaking, uh, 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 longboarding and stuff like that. And this is it. Once again, the thing I love about it is 
There are no motorised vehicles there. You've got either the bicycle or you've got uh, the horse and cart, which is fabulous to ride in. And so you don't get any of these scoop motor scooters and motorbikes zipping through you and stuff like that. Do you get a lot of like hawkers, that. you know, the ones that come up to Not many. There things. was only a couple. Okay. And That's it's good. really, really laid back mm. and it is so relaxing. Uh, we stayed in a good hotel. Um, there are lovely hotels there. That's the boat that you get be, uh, from Bali to... Uh, 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 yeah. to, uh, to Gili Trawangan. They, they have these swings in oh. the water and it's just great. You sit on these swings yeah. and the water just as it ebbs and flows. You have That's a swing. Beautiful. Oh, I had to have a couple of cocktails because it was happy Are they your photos? Hour. Are they your own They're, photos? These are all my what? photos except for that one. I was, oh, no, Sorry. I'm not in that one. And this is the most beautiful sunset. We're on the west coast of Gili Trawangan. Are they trying to get you out of the water with the horse? No, no, the horses, because they have lots of horses there because... Um, uh, b because there's no other yeah, way of no getting transport. around, and the horses are used for everything. They've got carts here you know, for for, mm. for for they they go and meet the ships, and and they they load them up. They they import water mm. in mm. in huge jars and stuff like that, and they well uh, they, the look, a lot of it? fresh seafood on there. How it's long does it beautiful. take you to go from Lombok over to Gili? Uh, well, if we did it direct, it was look it was about 10, 15 minutes Is that all? in a speedboat, not much. The first one we did, we were on a slower boat because we were going mm. snorkeling and we were going to Gilead Air. Yep. Um, and look, it's, it's oh. not a bad trip. Uh, you can also get there, of course, from Bali. So mm. you, you can you can actually yeah, sort of fly into Bali, minutes. get your boat across and then fly back to Perth mm. or vice versa because it's only a two-hour trip mm. from uh, Banoa Harbour. Yep. Um, I have to say that I really, really loved it there. It was so laid yeah, back. It, the, the weather was beautiful. The Beaches are so clean, mm. and you're right about it. It's not like Bali at all. It's, I found it far more relaxing. Uh, it's it's nicer than Bali. It's free holiday. Uh, and the other thing is, when you get onto the main island of Lombok as well, mm. um, it's 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 very very dense, thick rainforest, yes. and it's yep. absolutely beautiful. It's beautiful. You drive along the road, and there's all these macaque monkeys can, there. It's just great. Look, Wonderful. you can actually do a tour. On yeah. the island itself, because yes. I know our group that we went it's with. It's about the same size as Bali. It took a whole day. Yeah. They, they'd yeah. stop off for lunch and all that sort of thing. So you can do all that. But can I just tell people around Australia that are watching this, you can actually fly from your state to Lombok as well. AirAsia, check it out on your website. But you can, fly, you can go to Bali. Bali. Yeah, yeah, you can fly through Bali. And, and in, with Bali, can I just tell you, it's only about 40 bucks. So if you're thinking of going yeah. to Bali and saying, oh, I wouldn't mind going to Lombok, $40. You can use many airlines. There's yeah, a lot, a Lion Air, Air Asia. There's also um, Garuda. Garuda. So you and there's take a couple pick. of others that it's an incredible place. possibly wouldn't fly on. But uh, there's a couple of local ones. Yeah. Mm. But well, no, but it's it. good. Look, or you can go by boat. If it's One cheaper thought. than 40 bucks, don't take the flight. That's exactly but right. You thoroughly recommend it? I did. I loved it. Lots I of just food. thought it was the best place. It was so relaxing. It's beautiful. There's no hassle there whatsoever. Just great. Steve, Just what's your website if people want more from you? Uh, Steve Collins, travelcorrespondent.com. Look forward to that. Steve, we'll be back hopefully in a couple of weeks' time. Yep. This is travelling again. That is travel for this week. Thanks to AirAsia, Aruna Hotel and all the other wonderful people that uh, looked after Steve while he was over in Lombok. Take the trip or write to Steve and ask him what he thought of it if you've got any private questions, personal ones that... You know, a tribute to yourself. All right, we'll take a quick break. Coming up after the break, we're going to talk Food Bank. They've got a superhero program coming up. I'm going to talk about that next. Well done, Steve. Welcome back to The Couch. Nice to have your company. One of the organisations I love having on the show is Food Bank WA or Food Bank Australia. Today we've got two of the people that are running a fantastic program. It's to do with superhero foods. Let me introduce them. I'll try and get the names right. We practised it in the break. Of course, we've got Rosalind Gillia. Yes. And now, jo Ro Rosalind, you're the Food Security and Nutrition Manager at Food Bank. That's right. And we've also got sitting next to you Jennifer Tataglia. I think octataglia. Yeah, very good. We get them both right. And, of course, you're the public health nutritionist. That's right. Tell us just briefly, before I ask you the questions, what's, what are your roles? What do you do, Rosalind? What does that mean? 
Um, well, that means I manage the um, 17 strong nutrition team that we have. Um, we have a, a fantastic nutrition education and food literacy program mm -hmm. that's supported by the State Health Department and the State Department of Education. So really I manage um, all of those programs that are run by Jenny and others like Jenny. And yes. I also am looking at the um, food security um, within Western Australia as well. is this a new section in Food Bank? Is something new? Um, it's not a new section. Okay. We, we're part of the Healthy Food for All team. Yeah, yeah but I guess my new, my role is quite new. Yeah. So, Jenny, thanks for being here as well. Thanks. Tell me, let's start with you, your role. What do you do at Food Bank first before I ask you what Superhero Foods is? Yeah, so I'm a public health nutritionist and I'm currently coordinating a contract that we have with Healthway and that's about promoting healthy eating to uh, kids throughout WA and also um, a coordinating a parent nutrition education program as Fantastic well. Fantastic role. Let's go on to Superhero Foods. Yep. Tell me what that's all about, please, Jenny. Well, it's about these fun little cartoon characters we call Superhero Foods and they have an alias, which is an everyday food. And basically, are these we... the ones on my little poster here? Yes, they are. I'll show that to Jake. Yeah, so that's a five food groups poster, and it's just showing all the food groups. But instead of just the standard pictures that we may normally use, we've created these fun characters to depict all the healthy foods. It's fantastic because you're, you're sort of um, linking with children as well and younger people, and a, a lot of fun in that too. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. The great thing about that resource is that that's been adapted from a national um, national resource to mm. only have superhero foods yep. in that resource. So it's it's a big plus for um, for Jenny to have that done. Beautiful. How did the initiative actually start? What got it going? Well, when I first started at Food Bank, I could see that the school breakfast program was delivering uh, breakfast to about 18,000 kids a week. That's a lot of kids. It Fantastic certainly is. result. Yeah, so I thought it would be a great opportunity to promote some healthy eating within the school breakfast programs. So it came about from there and we developed some placemats for the school um, breakfast clubs. Mm -hmm. So I brought some of those here. Show so us some of those. They're, they're the, the placemats that go underneath the food. Yeah, so that's one of the placemats. They're very colourful, aren't they? Yeah, really colourful and really fun for kids. Do you kids. have a team at Food Bank that actually draws these all up or that you've got someone that you work with? No, we have been working with a local illustrator whose name is Ian Coate and yeah. also another uh, colleague of his, Elin Tan. West Australians. Yeah. Fantastic, well done. Yeah. So is the initiative working? Do you know yet if the initiative is working, working well? Um, obviously 18,000 breakfast tells me it's working beautifully. Yeah, well, stats and budgets are a different thing, as we all know. <laughs> How's it working? Well, we do know it's working because um, we have a website where people can download the resources and Jenny will be able to tell you how many hits we have regularly. Um, but really, it's quite phenomenal. And when the team go into the classroom with the resources as well, um, the kids are so engaged, um, particularly with the storybook. Um, when they're doing the cooking, they just love, they love the, the, the program and they love the superhero foods. Now you've got more than 100 resources available. When we talk about resources, what are we referring to? Is it books, information online? Yeah, so we've got a number of lesson plans for teachers so they can actually do the nutrition um, education in the classroom. We have some recipe books. I brought two along today to show you. Now these are recipes with real recipes that people at home can actually do? Yeah, they are. So these are two of the books, uh, Let's Cook, mm -hmm. and they have lots of really great recipes in there that are easy for kids to follow and... Um, we've, we've got these as free downloads on our, on our website. Ask, where can people get them from? So they can actually download it from the website? Yes. And um, can you actually buy the books or that you don't sell them for, for money? No, we do sell them as Ooh, well for a small price. So uh, through the website again. Uh, but we do provide all of these resources for free for schools that are registered with us for the School Wonderful. Breakfast Program. Because I'm picturing Christmas, you make a little basket up with some of these for the kids. They'd love it. Yeah. And kids love cooking these days, don't they? They do. So we want to encourage more cooking. But not only do we have the recipe books, we have the storybooks. That was my next question. Tell me about the storybooks. You gotta, do you know how many you've got? Yeah, so we've just got the two uh, books. Are they the ones I've got here? Yeah, so that's the big version that we big. have developed for, for teachers. One. Tell me about this one. Yeah, so that, Let's eat. That one was a project that we did last year and that was a really exciting project to be part of. So I wrote that book 
um, to really promote the healthy eating to kids who live outside of the metro area. So the, the kids who are living in regional and remote areas and also for Aboriginal children who would be um, accessing some of the bush tucker foods. So mm. We have like kangaroo and goanna and other bush foods in that one there. And we've it's actually really unique that we've linked in the contemporary foods with bush foods. So that one there is really, um, really beautifully illustrated and we actually used a local Noongar artist to that, do... That was my question to you, liaise with an Indigenous mm. group to help you with the recipes? Yes, we did. So I'm saying you and I probably wouldn't know a lot of those secret recipes. Well, that one there doesn't have recipes. That's actually a rhyming story. Okay. But we did work with an Aboriginal consultant and we did lots of consultation with people throughout WA to actually get oh, that... Oh, how good is that? Just yeah. to show you how il well il illustrated it is, very easy for people to read, for people like me, yep. you know, with poor eyesight and stuff. We've done it in big letters. Yeah. Fantastic. I think we're looking at that. I shall flick another page. Look at that one. Mm. Oh, it looks amazing. Fantastic books. And it's great to know that they've come from WA. And exactly. WA illustrators and WA people have had a lot to do with it. So well done. Now, just quickly, we showed this one up here, Joe's Epic Breakfast Adventure. Just quickly yeah. tell me what that one's about. Yeah, so that was the first book that um, I wrote for the Superhero Food Initiative. And that one talks about Joe who goes on an adventure and he goes looking for some... Looks like me at night. ...healthy foods. Sweet but he comes he comes across the zombie foods, which mm. zombie foods are the way we talk to kids about discretionary foods or junk foods. So that's him when he's in healthy town and everything looks nice and colourful and happy, lots of healthy foods, but he comes across some of the zombie foods and then has to decide which way he wants to to go. And, and throughout the book, we have some little hidden icons and the other book as well, which makes it really fun for kids to read. There's another one there. Yeah. Now, look, it looks amazing. I can just about eat the book, I think. That's how good it looks. <laughs> well done. Now, just a couple of more questions. If I turn over the page, Roslyn. You're not just a pretty face. We've got you here not, for a reason. Not only that. <laughs> Who is using the resources? Do we know? Yeah, we have lots of teachers using the resources, so downloading them from the web website and also um, contacting us for the resources. Lots of parents. Um, we have trainee teachers also using them, um, so students at uni who are learning to be teachers, um, and lots of other health professionals as well, um, public health nutritionists, health promotion officers, right around the state, all um, right. requesting the resources. And it's funded by Healthway? It is funded by Healthway. So we've been really fortunate to have Healthway funding for this project and another project um, around the superhero foods, and they've been a great supporter of Food Bank. And let's also, I know you don't, you've done a, a few collaborations with other people, just quickly tell us who they are. Um, so we've also, um, with the, the State Department of Health and the, and the State Department of Education as well, yeah, so, and we've worked with Gymnastics WA and also through Rebound WA where we developed some characters that have, um, we've got a wheelchair, a child in a wheelchair, people, this awesome. one here. You, you've done a yeah. lot to be inclusive, haven't you? And, and you've identified some fantastic groups in the community. Well done. Yeah. Where can we get more information? Are we going to give it to Jenny or Rosalind? <laughs> Maybe yeah. Rosalind to camera too, please. So you can um, download all the resources or find out where you can order the hard copies from the food bank um, .org.au, that's the website, or if you just search for Superhero Foods on Facebook or even just Food Bank on Facebook as well. And we are doing this all because we want to make people healthy and we want kids to have a great start in life as well. Absolutely. Right. Well done. Yeah. Food Bank WA, you are amazing. Good luck with the Superhero Foods. We'll have you back again and again and again because you do amazing stuff in the community. So well done. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're going to take a break. I need to get my superhero foods as well, I think. I'm going to eat these books. Coming up after the break, we're going to talk to an author about a new book, and then we're talking about kids that are doing great things in the community, in the world of green. They're called the Millennium Kids. So we'll get, we've got them coming in as well. So stay with us. Well done. Connect with The Couch online through Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. Welcome back to The Couch. I'm, I've got the pleasure now to actually speak to an author that's over east. Uh, her name is S.L. Lim. We've got her on the phone this afternoon. She's got a brand new book called Real Differences. S.L., thank you for being with us today. Thanks. Good to speak to you. Thank you very much. Tell me about the book Real Differences. What's it about? Real Differences is about some young people working out the question, why and what should I do with my life? Mm -hmm. So it's about some um, people who are quite idealistic, 
looking at the different options that they have in life to express that idealism, be that fundamentalist religion or general charitable do-gooding or lying on the carpet face down, feeling bad about everything and choosing between these different choices. Tell me about Nick. He's a middle-class guy. He's clever and white. What's his story? Yeah. So Nick is someone who is maybe in his early 30s. He's quite smart. He's quite self-reflective. He also has a sort of pathological inability to do basically anything. You know, he wants to do the right thing, but really kind of lacks the emotional commitment to you know, make the, the sort of decisions and the sort of sacrifices which that would entail. Mm-hmm. And he sort of has an old friend called Andy, who used to be his housemate, he used to act as a sort of externalized conscience of his. So they're very close and they have a lot of the same ideas about life. But Andy kind of has the nerve to make decisions, which Nick doesn't. Now, obviously, you captured the dreams and uh, disaffections of the millennial group. Tell me your background and how you got into that. Why did you want to bring that out? Um, well, my background is that I exist and I guess that I am defined by others as a millennial due to my um, era of birth. And I think my life is pretty interesting because I live it. So I decided to write a book about that sort of stuff. I love this uh, little bit of a a line that they've given to me. Author S.L. Lim actually uh, captures the dreams and disaffections of the millennial generation. Real Differences is an emotional, uh, resonant novel about idealism, ethical ambition and love filled with unforgettable characters. Would you say that's pretty accurate? Yeah, that's lovely, yes. Thank you very much. I'm only reading your script. But who do you recommend the book will suit? Who should read your book? I think that everyone should read the book, of course, but if there was a specific audience, um, I think that it would be people who just take an interest in the world and the interest in how to be a person, you know, of course, the sort of choices that we all make about careers and about relationships and so on, but also just taking an interest in understanding what happens to other people and how other people's minds work and why they make the choices they do and how this can mess things up or not. I'm thinking also older people like myself probably should read it so we can understand the millennial group. Oh, absolutely. Fantastic. Now, this is your debut novel. This is the first one that you've written, isn't it? Yep. Do you reckon you're going to do another one? Because I've I've been told that you may be writing a new one. Is it called Revenge? Yes, it's actually already written. So that's coming out with Transit Lounge next year. And that's essentially about... um, someone who has a lot of grievances against their family and decides to enact these in a bloody and dramatic fashion. Now, how long did it take you to write the first book, uh, Real Differences? Probably about uh, 18 months. 18 months. And I know you must have drawn on a lot of your friends. Is that who helped you with the, the, you know, the fact-finding for the book? Yeah. Yeah, I guess, you know, obviously there's a process of craft and there's a process of transformation... You know, there, there, there is a basis in, in, in reality and I suppose that reality has been condensed and heightened in, in certain ways. Now, anyone that reads this book in a very short sentence, tell me what they're going to get out of it. What's the, the benefit of reading the book? What, what should someone get after reading it? I think what you should get from reading it is perhaps a sense of recognition of yep. some of the experiences and emotional and, and ethical dilemmas that, that, that people face. Perhaps with a sense of amusement at how odd life and other people are. And perhaps you should feel a little bit sad and then a little bit happy and cathartized about feeling sad. Well, I'll try and do that being not that group. But uh, I always want to understand your group, the millennial. Thank you very much for being in, uh, on the phone today. The book is available for twenty nine ninety nine. It's available at thetransitlounge.com.au. Is that right? Yep, it's also available at a lot of bookshops. So, I mean, I'm in Newtown, King Street at the moment and it's available at pretty much all the bookshops here and it's at Berkelow Books. It's at a lot of places. Thank you very much. Well, thanks for being with us today. Thank you so much. Enjoy your night and we'll talk to you soon. Good luck. Thanks. Bye. Well done. There you go, an interesting book. Uh, Look out for it at Transit Lounge. Time for us to talk to another great group here, Millennial Kids. They're wonderful. And in the studio today we've got two of the people behind it. We've got a a junior board member. His name is Patrick Wake. And we've also got the CEO, uh, Katrina Luzamir. Did I get that right, Katrina? 
Welcome to the show. Now, I wrote to you guys because I, I found an article that popped up and I thought, what a great organisation. So maybe I'll ask you first, Katrina or Kat, mm -hmm. uh, tell me a little bit about a background of Millennial Kids. Um, Millennium Kids started as Kids Helping Kids in 1996. We had um, a group of young people who'd been to the United Nations uh, Children's Environmental Conference in England and when they came back they got back together and said, uh, wouldn't it be a great idea to start a conference in Perth run by Kids for Kids? And I happened to be a teacher uh, for two of those young people and I thought it was a great idea. And uh, we started uh, a conference, we ran it for three years, and then we decided that in fact we should become a not-for-profit. So that was about 1999. So 25 years, what a great result for anything for 25 years. I mean, the couch has been around 18 years and we think that's amazing. For someone, and I know how hard it is to run an organisation with very little money, but you've got a great young board as well, which Patrick's part of. Um, Tell me, uh, you've obviously, you started this yourself because you, were you the founder? No, we had uh, about six or seven people that we call co-founders. Five of them were children yep. and there were a whole bunch of adults. Are they so, still with the organisation? Uh, yes, they come and go, but we saw Fantastic. one of the co-founders last weekend when we were planting trees at the Tewart Forest down in Capel. Now, you not just planting trees, you're doing so much as artistic things, uh, but tell me one of the most exciting projects or that you've seen in your time? Uh, I think the most exciting thing is the fact that um, when we first started, everybody said it wasn't possible. It wasn't possible to have children on a board. You couldn't get a constitution that gave children the right to be on the board. Mm. Uh, it wouldn't last. And I think the most exciting thing is that after 25 years, we still have young people turning up who are passionate and that's what keeps the engine room of the organisation going. Why do you think, Kat, it's very important to have young people involved when we talk about the environment? Uh, I think they, I think children actually think differently about the environment. I think that, um, that, that from a, 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 the perspective of a child, you need to care for it, that it's there to enjoy, that you get your feet dirty and your hands dirty and you play in the creek and it's great fun and I think that changes as you get older. I guess it's going to be their world that we hand on to them so it's nice that they've got a hand or two involved in, and it's great. I think the work you're doing is great. Political parties haven't been able to do this if, between them and I think what you're doing is amazing to have the future generation actually starting to look after the earth and doing it better than us, the previous. So before we speak to Patrick, tell me about the 1,000 Actions uh, for the Planet project. And in 2016, 2017, um, the adults that work in Millennium Kids started noting a significant difference in the language that the children were using around the environment. Young people from the schools that we work in and in, in the community groups were starting to use words like anxious, they were talking about climate change, they were talking about extinction and we didn't want it just to be anecdotal, we thought there was more to it than, you know, than just a few children who were starting to use this language. So we surveyed 500 young people and we decided to transition uh, Millennium Kids um, for the next 25 years and we worked with 500 young people to develop a thousand actions for the planet. So it lines, aligns with the UN Sustainable Development Goals mm -hmm. and the objective is for a thousand projects to be born uh, up until 2030 based on those Sustainable Development Goals. Fantastic. Patrick, yeah. do you reckon us adults have stuffed it up when it comes to the environment? Um. You can say yes. A little bit. <laughs> That's why you're there. Tell me, Patrick, uh, do you love being on the board and part of Millennium Kids? Yes, I do. Is it a, like a real serious thing or do you go in there and eat chips and joke around or is it something you, you guys take a serious side to? It is. I mean, you have fun with it, I know yeah. that. Yeah, um, it is serious. We don't muck around, but we do have eat chocolate as one of our three main rules, so. Oh, okay. am I too old to join your group? No. <laughs> oh, oh, wonderful, I'll be there next week. <laughs> Tell me about the issues that are important to you. Now, you're 11 years old, Patrick. You love taking, you, you love seeing birds and you paint them, which will show some of those. But tell us a little bit about you. What are you passionate about? Um, I'm passionate about birds. One of the main concerns for me is 
uh, the loss of natural habitat for mm. birds in native bushland. I might show a couple of your paintings and you can maybe tell yeah. us where you, where you did these because these are all, all paintings, aren't they? Yes. Which you did yourself. Were you always artistic or did you did you think a few years ago, oh, I'm not too bad at painting? I've always loved animals and I started painting or drawing mm. animals at about nine years old and right. I'm now 11. And what's this one? That's a red-capped robin. Yep, and where did you see this one? I've seen one of them at Alice Springs oh, wow. when I went around Australia. Is that where you got this one from, the picture? The, the no, um, um, that one I did at one of my mentor's beautiful. houses. I'm going to show the other one because that one's beautiful as well. Tell us yes. about this bird. That's a rainbow bee eater. And What's so special about this bird? Um, it's migra migratory, so it goes up to the north in the winter, comes down to the south. So you love your birds. Yeah. So you think being, how long have you been part of the committee itself? I've been part of the youth board for about a year and mm -hmm. I've been with Millennium Kids for about two years. Do the adults listen to you? Because I've heard that the, the adults are really just helping you, but you guys decide what gets done. Is yes. that true? The youth board decides youth board, what we so do. Can you sack the adults? Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, you're not sure. <laughs> they haven't told you about that no. reserve powers yet. You guys are amazing. You know, it's really amazing to see kids. Now, you're 11. How old are the rest of the committee, um, roughly? Millennium Kids is aged at kids from 10 to 25, I think yep. it is. Still young. Yeah. We, we, I don't think I can join it anymore. Too old. <laughs> Tell us about the 1,000 actions for the planet. How are you involved in that? What's your understanding of that? Um, my project is p painting some birds like those and a calendar to encourage people to plant native plants that attract and retain native birds in their gardens. And how did you originally get involved? What made you get involved? This did your parents tell you about it? How did you find out? Um, we are very environmental and mm -hmm. we got it recommended to us and mm -hmm. Mum said, OK, we're going to go to this, we're going to see how it turns out and it's going to be great. I think you're doing a lot. You, you sound like you love what you're doing. Just quickly before we wrap it up, I know we've got a website, but can you tell me, if kids are out there, look at camera two, tell kids why they need to get involved. You need to get involved because if the adults make all the decisions, the kids don't have a say and they might want a different future to the way that some of the adults think. Katrina, has he told the story fully? Well, you see, uh, the beauty of Millennium Kids is it's not scripted. <laughs> and uh, what comes out of the mouths of children has kept me at the helm for 25 years. Well done. So, um, nice answer, Patrick. Thanks. I reckon well done, that's Patrick. A pretty you're good, a very pretty good. sensible young person. And I think having people like you, Patrick, running the environment, we feel, we feel a lot safer, don't we? Well done. Where do people go? On the website. Look at camera two again. Tell us the website. Um, if you want to find out more about Millennium Kids, you can go to www.millenniumkids.com.au www and we have a Facebook page. There's a face. Well done. Congratulations on being such a great team. Thank you, Katrina. Thank we're, you. We're hoping to get Katrina's team in once a month to talk about different projects because I think we need to be educated too. And uh, if you're interested, get involved because they're a great organisation. That is it. Sonia's told me we've run out completely out of time, uh, but we will be back next week. Please don't forget to watch the show on Facebook. We love you watching the show every week on a Wednesday. The show will be up early for those people who would like to watch it on Facebook who don't have Foxtel. And for those who do have Foxtel and want to watch it on the big screen, the TV, you can actually watch it on a Sunday night at 8.30. If you're living in Perth, 10.30 all around Australia, please write to us. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, a performer, or you've got a great project then you want it promoted because we'd love to have more of uh, these fantastic programs like Millennium Kids. We're going to have them on the show more often. We're going to see you next week. Have a wonderful week. Thanks to all the crew that came in today and worked on the show, and we'll see you soon next week on the show. Bye-bye. The Couch is proudly supported by Palace Cinemas, Elite Audio Visual Productions, Crown and Andrews Board Games, fun for the whole family, and Scoot Airlines. Escape the ordinary, fly Scoot. <laughs>